Now, one thing that not many people seem to understand is how quickly new species can actually be created. So it is quite common for people to think that new species have evolved over millions of years, which in fact some new species can be created in as quickly as 12 generations. So there are many species of man-made animal and fish and it is common to be able to stabilize the genetics of a whole new species by line breeding, cross breeding and all these other techniques that the humans use which are pretty much the same techniques that occur in the wild within 12 generations. It's actually very quick. Now natural disasters are another thing that shape the natural environment and create new environments destroy environments and create new opportunities. So just as you see a natural disaster, whether it be a bushfire in the Australian bush, whether it be the crown of thorns starfish, whether it be a bleaching episode, they all seem terrible at the start because they may directly cause the death of species or number of units within a species. But then that void created may then or commonly does then allow new opportunities for whole new species to evolve and these new species that evolve may be more advanced and more suited for their present environment now I reckon all fish can be bred if the environment's right so there are many things that cause the right environment to allow fish to breed. Could be atmosphere, could be various barometer pressures. Um, it could be presence of schools of these particular animals. So some of them are not easy to breed, but I believe everything, if understood correctly and if the right environment is offered, then I believe they can be bred. The challenge is to find out the secret. I believe every fish has got a secret for how to keep it and a secret for how to breed it. So all fish must breed, obviously in the wild, and all fish must die. Death allows life and life allows death. So when you are keeping fish, understanding the fish, understanding their evolutional niche, and looking at a big picture in regards to if a species dies off in the wild, it's absolutely terrible. But then that opportunity, which is then created, may allow the evolution of a whole new fish or animal. You must understand why you want to breed. Now, many people want to breed fish, but it's sort of good to sit down and figure out why you want to breed them. Because you may find it a lot more fulfilling if you give yourself a little tick sheet and put a bit of thought into why you actually want to do it. So you might want to breed because you love watching the interaction of the fish, you love watching the little characteristics, you love watching the way the fish interact with each other. Some people like to breed to save the species, like my brother was quite passionate about the linny, which is not a common species in Australia. And he committed a lot of money and time to breeding linny. Just makes you feel good to know that there's fish around. Which might not be if you weren't breeding that particular fish. So that's a good motivation to you know, contact us and find out what are the rare fish. What are the fish that people would like more of. And try to strengthen um, the availability of that fish. Especially in countries like Australia where we can't freely import new species. Some people breed for pride they go to the fish clubs and they just want to talk about how good their fish are that's okay some people breed to subsidize their hobby for example when i was a kid i used to breed cichlids and then when i started getting into salt water and i like keeping corals and so forth i'd actually breed the cichlids and use the credit for the cichlids when i trade them in at the local shops and that's how i'd get my corals start learning about them um, so it's good when you're breeding 
if you start with the end in mind because I really think it helps increase satisfaction. A lot of people start breeding because there's something they're really interested in, but they sort of forget about that. So even if you write down a little aim or um, just try and stay fresh while you're doing it because I think um, once you've achieved that particular aspect, maybe it's time to breed a new species. Like a lot of people are very passionate about breeding a fish. Once they've bred it a few times, they think they're overbreeding. But new species will create new challenges and allow you to watch new interactions and ignite new passions. So I would highly recommend if you have bred a species, once you're over it, trade them in, get a new species, use the tank and open that whole inquiry again about the mysteries of the new species to breed. It's also good to know who you're selling the fish to. So it's really disappointing when you breed a species of fish and nobody wants to buy them. Or even trade them in and you end up stuck with them. So it's good to have a conversation with your local shop and say, hey look, what fish are you after? And just bear that in mind. Because it's much nicer to breed fish in and get three bucks credit each for them than breed a whole bunch of fish and you can't even give them away. So get new species to breed once you feel the challenge from your old ones over so I really believe that once you've bred a fish breed it as much as you want until you're after a new challenge because at the end of the day you probably don't have the ability to have 30 tanks so utilize your tanks by changing the species of the fish you have to keep your passion now I'm a big believer in sharing your passion and knowledge it's no good to you when you're dead and life is quick I go to the fish clubs sometimes and some people just think they're so good because they can breed certain species of fish and when you ask them their secrets they just look at you like you're a loser and don't tell you so if you ask me those people are losers because i believe that passion needs to be shared and knowledge needs to be shared so i have much more respect for someone that can breed fish and share it with everyone because it ain't no secret squirrel society and the more everyone is successful the more everyone's breeding fish the happier and healthier this hobby is going to be so the key to breeding a species is to understand it understand how it breeds what ecosystem they're from does it look after its young and if so for how long when should the young be removed What's the water quality versus nutrients required by the species of fish? And talk to other people that have bred the fish. Google the fish, buy books on the fish. The more you learn about those fish that you breed, the more likely you're going to be successful, the more likely you're going to enjoy it. And once again, once you've done it, wrap it up and try a new species. A lot of fish have got a really interesting story behind them, such as the dovii and the parrotfish. In the natural environment in the lakes of America, the dovii, which is a very big, powerful, but lazy fish, has a relationship with the parrotfish, which is a very busy, um, active, smaller species of American cichlids. And their relationship is with the neats, the neutropolis. And the neats are very aggressive, and they often attack the parrots. So the parrots actually nurture and grow the offspring of the dovii, because the dovii often eat the neats. So a lot of the fish have these little relationships, which as you learn about them, just really opens up the fish to you and makes you appreciate and enjoy and understand them. So areas where the parrot does not live with the dovii, the parrots struggle. But the parrots actually grow up the babies of the dovii. The dovii are generally quite lazy and not real good parents. So the, so the parrots will often foster the dovii babies to allow the dovii babies to grow up to make sure there's a good co colony of dovii babies because the dovii grow up and don't tend to eat the parrots because they're bigger than the mouth of the dovii. But the dovio sure love to eat the neats because they're a smaller but more aggressive species of fish that threaten the parrots. So various fish have different um, 
breeding techniques. Some are substrate spawners, some are egg scatterers, some are mouth brooders, some are live birth, so the baby just pops out. So understanding what fish you have is great, and also changing what you've got. So you might breed discus because they're lovely to watch. Something like an Oscar is an amazing fish to watch breed. Or you might try something like your um, Cynodonis. The Cynodonis multipunctatus, which is these catfish here. The cuckoo cats, they will actually um, hide out when they see a cichlid breeding, a mouth breeding cichlid. They'll actually run in, drop their own egg, fertilize their own egg and shoot through. The um, cichlids will try to chase the catfish away and then in their confusion will pick up the egg for the catfish and then the catfish egg is in the mouth of the cichlid. When the cichlid um, looks after its eggs, it's looking after the catfish. The catfish hatches first and it eats all the cichlids. And when the cichlid is ready to release its babies, it just releases a, cat, releases a catfish which runs off and says thanks for the ride. Learning all this stuff is good fun. So biological capacity, breeding exhausts biological capacity. Biological capacity can suppress breeding. So it's really important to have a very good filter with very good filter media and plenty of oxygen in the tank. Because if you don't have enough fish in the tank, if you've got too many fish in the tank, it can suppress the fish breeding. And it's really important to have a good filter. So too many fish can be a problem. Not enough filtration can be a problem. And breeding is a big um, drain. Now see the top of that tank is very flat. I want to make sure my tank's got good water flow and got very good surface agitation. So I've got good gas exchange. My redox potential will increase and it will allow the bacteria in my filter to grow better. So there are also various biological compounds that grow in your, that accumulate in your aquarium. Phenols, pheromones, various hormones and things that can actually stunt the growth of your fish. So water changes in medias like polyfilter definitely seem to help that. Now mate recognition is um, something to understand with your fish. Some fish um, recognize their mates from color, some from shape, some from behavior, could even be the way they swim, some from territory, some from nests, some from the shape of the fins, the shape of the head, some from bowers such as that. So the species, the male in the species will create a certain nest the females will swim around looking for that particular nest so they know who to breed with. Colour can also spark fish to breed when the male's out in the colour, letting the females know he's ready and vice versa. So pattern in the colour, intensity of the colour, egg spots, um, colour flashing, various different ways that fish can get attention and allow their mates to know they're ready to go, they've got a spot ready to go. Shape can also be a big thing. The humps on the heads can allow them to identify each other. Fins, the size of the fish, shape of the nose, types of scales, eyes, etc. Allow the fish to um, identify each other to work out their mates. So even if the, there's no light, it could be the shape, it could be something else. Um, behavior, the value of a subdominant. Now very often people will breed fish and they'll get one male and heaps of females. And sometimes I've found that to be not as successful as having a subdominant in there, so you have a couple of males. Therefore, sometimes the male will fight with other males and try to breed with females. So I'm not a fan of one technique. You try it, if it works, if not, monitor it and try something else so sometimes with trophies for example i used to have plenty of males and then i used to find that if i had plenty of males the males would fight with each other and leave the females in better condition whereas other people would want one male and heaps of females so working out how many females to male is good some fish pair up some fish breed in colonies so understanding them and trying to provide an opportunity that best suits the species you want to breed so territory, some fish have, most fish have got two dimensions.